give you praise.
you've done I cannot help but give you praise when I remember who you are I cannot help but give you thanks when I remember what you've can have it all, Lord. Let's sing that line or those few lines that says, I can't believe how good the Lord is. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And I can't believe how good the Lord Maybe you can testify to that. I can't believe how good the Lord is. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. Oh, I can't believe how good the Lord is. I can't believe how good the Lord is. remember who you are when I remember who you are I cannot help but give you thanks when I remember what you've done you've done yes Lord and I can't believe how good the Lord is I can't believe how good the Lord is oh my Lord I can't believe how good the Lord Being it to you, I can't believe how good the Lord is. I can't believe how good the Lord is. Oh, my Lord, I can't believe how good the Lord is. He's been good to me, He's been good to me. so good you've been so good consuming on and in eternal is your love everlasting 
unrelenting, never ending. Is your love consuming, unending, eternal? Is your love? Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're a living hope. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is under your prayers aren't And Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord and Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust 
lost is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. And I Call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. My soul will rest, so will rest in your embrace. I am yours, you are mine. I am yours, you are Set a fire down in my soul I can't contain and I can't control I want more of you, God I want more of you, God Set a fire down in my soul I can't contain and I can't control I want more of you, God I want more of you, God Set a fire down in my soul can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more and more and more. There's no place I'd rather be. Come on, church. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I'd rather be, no place, no place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be here in your love, here in your love. And no place I'd rather be, no place, no place I'd rather be. Here in your love, here in your love. And Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, and Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come from this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Presence, Lord. Show me your glory, 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 Lord. Cause I long to look on the face. 
Long to stay on your pillows It's where I belong I long to look on the face Of the one that I love Long to stay in your pillows It's where I belong And oh, how we love you Amen. You can have all this world, but just give me Jesus.
this be a sacrifice Let me dedicate my life to worship you Oh, that's our heart's desire, right? Let this be a sacrifice Let me dedicate my life to worship you I'm a lover of your presence, 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 lover of your presence. Stirring deep inside, you're all that really satisfies. We worship you. A passion stirring deep inside, you're all that really satisfies. We worship you. We are lovers of your presence. Lovers of your presence, lovers of your presence, yeah, yeah. Lovers of your presence, lovers of your presence, lovers of your presence. Just sing that line with us. We're lovers of your presence, 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 lovers of your presence. Come on, sing it out. Lovers of your presence. Lovers of your presence, lovers of your presence, oh Lord, lovers of your presence, lovers of your presence, lovers of your presence. Lovers of your presence, 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 lovers of your presence. Goodness, Lord, how much we love you. We're lovers of your presence, lovers of your presence, lovers of your presence. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for you first loved us, oh God. An incredible love, an incredible love knows no end. Thank you, Lord, for your unending love towards us, God. You chose us, God. We didn't choose you. You chose us, God. Thank you, Father. You first chose us. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. We thank you, Lord. Yeah. Oh, my God. We 
thank you, Lord. From a grateful heart we sing. And I was made for love. I was made for love. I was made for loving you. We were made for loving him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Literally created to worship him. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, bless you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine, ever of salvation, purchase of Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. day long, perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture, not burst on my sight, angels descending, bring That's what we get to do, right? Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, I'm happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking Lost in his love. Come on, every voice singing. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my Praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. 
praising my Savior all the day long. That's what we get to do is praise Him all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. And that no matter what, you're going to be praising your Savior all the day long. Because He's worthy. Of all your praise Jesus, lover of my soul, yeah. Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay, yeah. set my feet upon a rock. Now I know. Until the very end, Jesus, lover of my soul, yeah. Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay, yeah. Set my feet upon the rock. Now I know. Awesome, you are holy, holy, 
Taste and see, yes. And I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love oh, forever and ever. I could sing of your love forever, oh Lord, yeah, forever, Lord, ever and ever, forever, Lord. I could sing, I could sing of your great love, of your great, great love. Sing, Lord, forever, Lord, forever, Lord. I could sing, I could sing of your great, great love, great, great love. I could sing, hey, Lord, of your great, great love, your great, great love, Lord. Oh, how. Could sing, just never gets old. To tell you I love you, Lord. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. To love you, to love you, to love you, oh, 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 my God. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. Hallelujah. Is that, your, is that your heart? Is that your prayer? We will never let him go. We will never let you go. Thank you, Father. We will never let you go. Thank you that you will never let us go. He will never let us go. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. 
From you are all things, to you are all things, you deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. From you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory. You're worthy of it all.
Exalt you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Exalt you, Jesus. Oh, We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, King of kings and Lord of lords. We exalt you. We exalt you. We thank you, Father. We give you the praise and the glory. And our Father, On earth as it is in heaven, let heaven come to earth as it is in heaven, let heaven come. 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 Oh, 
glory, all honor and all power. All glory, all honor and all power, oh Lord. All glory, all honor and all power, oh, it belongs to you. All glory. Shekinah glory in this room. It's your Shekinah glory. Oh, it's in the room. It's in the room. He's in the room. It's a Shekinah glory flowing, falling, falling, falling upon you right now. Just lift your hands and just say, thank you, Jesus. I receive it. As you feel me, I receive it. Shekinah glory is in the room, in the room, in the room. It's falling on me in the room, in the room, in the room. It's filling you up. Hey, yeah. Shekinah. His glory prevails on us. He with us, the glory prevails on us. He's here with us, it's His glory prevails on us. He's here with us, He's here with us. I don't know about you, but I can never get enough. Just love to worship Him, Spirit and truth. In spirit and in truth, we just love to worship You, Lord. In spirit and in truth, to worship You, Lord. In spirit and in truth, and in truth and in truth. Oh, yeah, yeah, we just love to worship you, in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord. You said, I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly. I came that you might have joy and joy to the full. 
You said, if you'll believe in me, I will give you peace and joy completely that you might overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. You said you're going to fill us with hope, and that hope does not disappoint because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Your power does not disappoint because Jesus Christ fills our temple, the wisdom of God and the power of God. I'm just going to ask you to stand. Overflow, overflow. Overflow, overflow. Overflow. Just lift your hands and make that your prayer right now. Overflow, overflow, overflow. You're asking him to fill you to the overflow. <laughs> overflow, overflow. Just make that your own. Just sing it out. Overflow, overflow, my God. Overflow, 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 overflow. Overflow, overflow. Overflow, 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 overflow. Overflow with rivers of living water. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water, torrents of living water. Thank you that your promise is without fail. Every promise is yes and amen in Christ Jesus to the glory of God, to the glory of the Father. We celebrate you, Jesus. Nobody like you, we lift you up. You're worthy of all our praise, the highest praise. We exalt your name. We magnify your name. We amplify your name. All glory to you, Lord. Praise, honor, and glory be to you forever and ever. Amen. Church, make this your prayer. Make this your prayer. Overflow in me. Overflow, overflow. God, let overflow. Overflow, Lord, overflow. Overflow in me, my God. Oh, Jesus, overflow. Overflow. took us right into the Holy of Holies, right into the Holy of Holies, face to face with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oh, he's so good. He's always good. He's always good. He's altogether lovely, and he's always good. Hallelujah. And he's overflowing on the inside of you right now. He's spilling out. Let him spill out. Let him overflow. He'll overflow out of you right now. Hey! Overflow, 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 overflow in me, my God. Yeah, yeah. See, when you overflow, you walk in the love of God, you walk in the anointing of God, 
and you have something for somebody else. And you will go out and make disciples because you're overflowing. Overflow, 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 overflow in us. Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Hallelujah! Amen! Let's just stay in the spirit. Yes, stay in the spirit. Just stay. Jesus. Yeah, stay engaged. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Spirit, Lord. thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You said, behold, what manner of love the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called as sons and daughters of God. Thank you, Lord. You, whoo, you're overflowing us, Lord. You're drenching us with your love. You're lavishing us with your love, Lord. We're forever changed, Lord. Your presence changes everything. Thank you, Jesus. Just I want you to pray in the spirit as we put some music on. Just a little lower, the music a little lower. She the music just a tad bit lower, please. She the just lift up your hands for the Lord right now. We pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. The Lord never gets tired of you pouring out your praise unto him. He never gets tired. He loves you to sing. He, he, he loves when we sing unto him. He loves when we come with a great expectation and with an anticipation that he is showing up. That he, that he is going to move powerfully in our midst. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Just pray in the spirit for a moment. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, sweet, sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we've come to worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we've come to adore you. Oh, hallelujah. If that's what you've come to do tonight, worship him and to adore him. I, I want you, to, if you're a worshiper and that's your heart's been stirred, uh, like you just know you long for that, I want you to come up and we're just going to let the spirit flow a little bit. We're going to sing in this manner. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we just want more of you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we've just come to worship you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. For what you've done this, this evening, Lord, we thank you, Father. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor, Lord God. I thank you that we get to come before a holy God. We get to sing. We get to rejoice. We get to celebrate. We get to pour out our heart. We get to tell you that we love you. We get to receive your love. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Demons have to flee. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Every time we speak, sing the name of Jesus. Yeah, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, and every demon has to run, and Jesus, and every demon runs, 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 oh, Jesus, oh, how we love that name, and we're unashamed of the name of Jesus, we're unashamed of that name, we're unashamed, oh, I'm unashamed of the name of Jesus. You are mighty, oh, you are holy, oh, you are glorious. We're unashamed, unashamed, oh, let 
Let me shout it a little louder. Jesus. Come on, shout it a little louder. Jesus. Oh, shout it a little louder. Jesus. Oh, we've come to sing the name of Jesus. Oh, we've come to sing the name of Jesus. Oh, we've come to sing the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We are committed. We are committed believers. We are committed. We are completely 100% committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. We will not change. We will not shift. We will not change. Uh, we will not change our opinion. We will not change our desire. Our heart is so focused and fixed upon Jesus. Where else will, can we go? He has the keys to our heart. He has the keys to our heart. Thank you, Father, for what you've done already this evening. Glory to God. Woo, thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. You know, yeah, you just get stirred up and you don't want to stop. So I'm not going to stop the flow of the Spirit. Keep going. Come on, keep going. Come on, keep going. Woo. You know, in Timothy, you know, he said, just stir up that gift. Stir up that gift, right? Sometimes you don't need to, you need to stir up the gift within you. And how do you stir up the gift? But you press in to the one and only one, the one who saved you, the one who loves you, the one who rescued you, how he's healed you, he lifted you up, he turned your life around. He set your feet on a solid ground. Oh, stir it up. Stir it up. Stir up the faith within you. Stir up the gift within you. Oh, he can't let us say. You're not leaving the same way you walked in here today. Stirring it up. Stirring it up. Stirring it up. Oh, we press in to the Holy One. We press in, we press in, we press in, we press in. Glory! Woo! Come on, do you feel the anointing? Do you just feel the anointing? Wow, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Do you feel the anointing enough to sing? Yes, yes, yes. Of course you do because it's a gift that's within you. Come on up. Come on up. Of course you do. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, stirring it up. Stirring. 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 Stir it up. Come on, stir up the gift within you. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Oh, just give me Jesus. Oh, just give me Jesus. Oh, just give me Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, everybody. Let's. We're just gonna sing. We're gonna sing. We're all singing, uh, right? Stirring up the gift. Inside of you, stirring it up, stirring it up, stirring it up. Oh, stirring it up, stirring it up. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the gifts inside of this precious one. I thank you for the gift of song. I thank you for the gift of song. Holy Spirit, take over, Holy Spirit. Fill me up, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Fill me up, Come on. Till I overflow, yeah. fill me up, Lord, Woo! fill me up, Lord, yeah. fill me up, Lord. 
Enough is Fill enough. Father God, I thank Lord. you that you are her forward guard and her rear Fill guard. I thank you that you are healing Lord. her. I thank you, Lord God, that you are protecting her. I thank you, Lord God, that she is healed, set free, and delivering from the assignment of the enemy. Receive even now. Stirring it up, stirring up faith, stirring up the gifts, stirring it up. You are called. You have been positioned for such a time as this. God has equipped you right where you are at in the midst of all of that horrific witchcraft. But God has placed you, and you will not be defeated. So we decree right now God's abundance over you. Hey,
stay there. Let God finish. Wow. Hallelujah. Woo! I love you. You're amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Who needs healing in their body? Wave your hand. You have pain or you have something going on in your body. You need prayer for your body. I want you to wave your hand. Come on up. The two of you, come on up. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's fine. Is Dave, did you say Dave? David? Okay. What's going on? How do you, what do you need prayer for? Nerve damage. Nerve damage in your hips. So there's pain right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yep. Okay. On a scale of one to ten, how much? Um, it's usually at a one or ten right now. Okay. Years, so. Years ago. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you're, all, you're almost healed. So it's just a one. Yeah. Okay. But still, we want it to be a zero, right? Can we put some music on, please? Hallelujah. Holy on the Marorobo say. Is it this side? Which 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 side is it? Okay, this side. Oh, it, it shifts. Okay, okay. Thank you, Father. Father God, it's going to shift no more. It's going to shift on the way out, and that's it. It's not going to be shifting from side to side. So right now, we speak over this nerve damage, and I take authority right now over the nerve damage. I rebuke it right now, and I command every demonic spirit that would come against him with sickness, with pain, with disease, to go right now. We speak over your nervous system right now. Be healed in the nervous system. Now, other people that have something similar with their nervous system, I want you to be receiving this prayer, okay? I want you to lift your hands up and say, oh, that's me, so I'm receiving it right now. I'm receiving it right now. And Phil, can you keep your eye out? And if there's like some people that look like they're going to fall over, just go stand behind them, please. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Father. Glory, wow. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, we thank you. You are the healer. Be healed in the name of Jesus right now. Be healed. Thank you, Father. From a one to a zero. From a one to a zero. And I want you to start testing it. I want all of you with nerve damage that you guys raise as well as you. I want you to start testing it. Tell me how. Wave your hand and something's shifted. Something's different. Less pain, completely gone. Wave it, wave it, wave it. Tell me what's going on. Who had nerve pain? Who had nerve pain? I'm sorry? There's a lot of me. I know. Who had, who, okay, you and then this gentleman. Okay. Um, and so tell me, okay. Um, any, what's different? Nothing yet. What's different? Okay. With, with the pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he noticed your pain. <laughs> it's still a nerve, yeah, nerve it's still nervous nervous system though yeah oh, no. <laughs> okay yeah. both of you guys stand up here then yeah. Teresa you too because you're the third one right yeah. is there anybody else with nerve damage let's just do it that way anybody else nerve damage no nerve pain no just the three okay I want to make sure sometimes people hesitate before they respond yeah wow okay but God is healing okay we're, we're gonna pray we're gonna pray we're gonna pray see I knew it okay there's one more Okay, ready? We're going to pray. We're going to pray. So focus on Jesus healing you right now. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. Thank you, Pastor Kim. Jesus is the healer. Jesus, you are the healer. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Are you up here for nerve damage pain as well? Are you up here for nerve damage pain? Okay. So there were more of you. Come on. Yeah, we're, we'll make room. We'll make room. In the marble, say right now I speak to the nerve endings. Right now I speak to the nervous system. In the name of Jesus, I speak restoration, restoration, complete restoration in the name of Jesus. Every demonic assignment has to go. Every place that's laced with fear and trauma has to leave these bodies right now. In the name of Jesus, fear, leave now. Hey, authority, I must say, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Wow. Thank you, Father. Every assignment be broken off of him right now. I decree healing in his shoulder, healing in this joint, healing and restoration. Wow. Thank you, Father, for creative miracles. Thank you, Lord God, for create. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Lord, for creative miracles. Oh, hallelujah. Woo, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord, for what you have already done. I thank you that he's a living miracle. I thank you, Lord God, that you've already done so many healings in this man. And this is just going to be another one. Just another one. We stand in agreement. And we thank you, Lord God. And we apply the blood of Jesus over the shoulder, over this arm, over these nerve, nerve endings in the name of Jesus. Completely restored. Completely restored. What's going on with you? Yeah. There we go. Face me. Dropped shoulder from a pinched nerve. Yeah? Right here? Okay. How do you know it's dropped? Do you just feel it? You can see it? A little off? Okay. Okay. Stand straight. Yep. It is. Okay. I take authority over the spine, spinal nervous system and the spinal cord right now in the name of Jesus. I command divine alignment to every joint, every bone right now, every ligament, soft tissue right now. Be healed, whoa, and be restored right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for divinely aligning her spine. Thank you, Lord, this shoulder, these both level, level. Let them be leveled in the name of Jesus. You, you, the one that your lump had shrunk significantly on Thursday, right? You had a protruding, she had a protruding lump and it was, it was visible. And she said it went down to just a little, what, like a nodule, like a little tiny. How is it now? How is it now? All the way in the back. Okay. We're going to just pray for that little nodule. So it went from a very obvious protruding lump and it disappeared in our midweek service but now we just rebuke any trace of it and we say it goes right now fire of god destroy even the the just the residue it goes right now completely shrink and dissolve even as your shoulder evens out levels out thank you lord god hallelujah thank you father thank you father thank you father thank you father What's going on with you, Carmen? I'm sorry, Camille? Huh? Okay. It's hard for you to sit. A lot of pain in your leg. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Lord. We thank you that you said you will lay your hands upon the sick and they shall recover. So we decree right now healing over your, over your whole body, healing over your nervous system. All these nerve pain, all these damage to the nerves. No, we say enough is enough. We decree healing over the nervous systems in the name of Jesus right now. The fire of God to destroy that thing which was trying to come against you. Be healed. Be Pain, go. Start checking. Start checking. your Lift your leg. Start to check it. Pain, go. Completely dissipate in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lift it. Lift it. Put it down. Lift it. Put it down. Lift it. Put it down. Thank you, Father. Okay, you're testing it right now. Yes. Tell us what's going on. It feels fine. <laughs> well, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. Amen. How about, okay, with the blue shirt, and I prayed for you. Come on back up. I'd like to. Oh. <laughs> okay, I, I prayed for your nervous system, nerve pain, right? How is it right now? You test it. Tell me what's changed. What has, has anything shifted? Or is anything different? It feels looser. Praise God. So praise God for that. But yet there is still something where? In lower vertebrae. There's still some pain there. Okay. Thank you, Lord. So, so God is healing him. He is healing him. There's less pain, but there's pain in his lower vertebrae. So right now, Father God, in the lower vertebrae, be healed. That the glory of God... Start to fall. Yep, all stress, all tension, all fear, leave this body right now. Every demonic assignment, every witchcraft assignment tried to come against your family and your loved ones, I command it to be removed. And every trapped, every trapped hormone and every trapped demon that would try to keep you in a place of pain, I command it to go right now. Be loosed off of him. Completely loosed. Wow. Off your spine. Something's shifting right now. 
Something is shifting all the way down his spine, all the way down his spine. We're going to test him in a moment. We're going we're gonna to check and we're going to test him in a moment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Wow. Glory. Hallelujah. Wow. Oh, come on. Hi, how can I pray for you? Best prayer. Just want more of him. Lord, I think that's everybody in here, but we just want more. But I know there's some that are here for specific, like for healing. But Father, she just wants more. So, Lord, saturate her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. I thank you, Lord God. Woo! Anointing falling afresh upon her. The anointing of God falling afresh. Yes. Your friend? How can I pray for you? Um, I'm still just trying to check it because I feel it is for a time and I know some of them might be affected. Okay. Okay. Oh. She has a lot of things. Okay. You're being demonically attacked by your boyfriend's neighbor? Oh. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's physical things and there's also demonic assignments. Okay. All right. Uh, what was your name? Lauren. Lauren. Okay. Okay. Lift your hands up, Lauren, to the Lord. Just lift up your hands to, to the Jesus right now. Thank you, Father. Father, first of all, I pray over Lauren. I decree no weapon formed against her shall prosper. I cancel, look at me, look at me. I cancel every assignment of witchcraft against you. Coming against your health. Coming against your mind. Against your emotions. I take authority right now and I say, enough! It goes! I break the power of the wicked spell and curses trying to come against you from this neighbor. In the name of Jesus, not allowed. Amen. Forbidden. Amen. We slam that door shut and we apply the blood of Jesus upon you. And Father, we decree right now, you mentioned, you mentioned fear, you mentioned anxiety, you, you mentioned high blood pressure, you mentioned surgery, reproductive system issues, you mentioned a lot of things. But right now, when I lay my hands upon you, do you have faith that God will touch you and heal you? Completely. Do you have faith? Completely. Amen. So Father... I thank you, Abba, for what you're about ready to do. I thank you, Lord God. Oh, Father, there it is. The glory, the glory. Just take it, just take it, just take it. Receive it all. Thank you, Father. Let it go. Let it all go. Let it all go. That tears are healing. Tears are healing. And God is healing you in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry. They're abusive, and yes. but they're getting evicted soon. Okay. I'm just like hoping that they leave soon. Yes. Okay. So we draw a bloodline right now around the property. We decree no weapon formed against you is going to prosper in the name of Jesus. We can't. That's just the Holy Spirit. Do not resist the Holy Spirit. We decree right now that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And so in the name of Jesus right now, head of us. See, rise up, rise and do the will of God. Fear must go. Fear goes now. Wow. Wow. Fear is leaving right now. Anxiety goes right now. We draw that bloodline around them right now. Thank you, Lord. We decree salvation over them. We call them into the kingdom. We call them into the kingdom. That's what we do. Yeah. Salvation. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord. I just want you to stay here. I want you to just keep praising God. I want you to thank God for what he is doing. That fear has to go. Fear and torment must leave you. It has to go. Yep, it has to go. You know, is there something you need to let go of? You need to ask God to forgive you of? Can you ask her? Just, just talk to her. If there's something you need to go, is there fear? Is there shame? Is there something you're worrying about something? Yeah, let it go. Say, Father, forgive me. If there's something you need to be forgiven of, do it quickly. Same with you. 
Do quickly. All right. Amen. Praise God. Come on up. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Okay. So every familiar spirit right now, I just rebuke and take authority over. I'm going to have you step this way just so you don't end up in... On top of Teresa. In the name of Jesus, I th or yeah, thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, fear has to go. I want you to look at me. I separate you from every ungodly generational curse right now. Every spirit of fear, every place of trauma, I separate you. I decree right now, severed in the name of Jesus, ungodly thinking, compromise, stress, trauma, I command it to come off right now. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of paranoia, I command it to leave her right now. I decree she has the mind of Christ. Uh, yep, that's okay, honey. Baby girl, when you're, those are tears that are coming up. Don't let your, don't, don't um, stifle those tears. Let them flow. Let them come forth. Let them come forth. You want to pray for her? Let them come forth because God is healing you. Just let them come forth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. How, how, how are you doing? Tell us about your back. Tell, how's your back? Your spine and all that. What's changed? It still hurts a little, but it's getting, it feels better. It feels yeah. better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Is there improvement? So it feels better. Praise God. Okay, so what, what is left? Where is it left? How much is left? Tell us about it. It's, I mean, it's, it's just less. It's just less pain. Less, less pain? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So do you believe that God wants to heal you 100% tonight? Do you believe that God wants to heal you 100% tonight? Yes, because you're a man of faith. So, Father, yeah, it's Frank. That's what I thought. Okay. So, Father, I just lift up Frank right now to you. And I thank you, Father. You are the divine healer. Do we need to have him come step forward? Yeah. Why don't you come step a little bit forward? Thank you, Lord. You are the divine healer. So right now, guilt has to go. Shame has to go. Unforgiveness towards self. Self-hatred has to go. Self-blame has to go right now. In the name of Jesus, I want you to open your eyes and look at me. Spirits are tied to, un to uh, pain. You know, a lot of times there's demonic spirits. There are things that are connected to our healing, and we have to renounce things. So there are things in your life, mentally, emotionally, you've hung on to if they're not of God, like... Oh, it's my fault, or I, I, you know, I messed this up, and I can never get over it. That guy can never, I can never make it right. It's blame, it's blame, condem condemnation, those kinds of things. I want you to renounce those things that come to your mind right now. Just say, I renounce, and then start listing what they are: fear, shame. I renounce it. Condemnation. I come out of agreement with these things. Mm -hmm. Just say, out, just say them out loud. Keep going. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Can we put the music up a little louder, please? There you go. There you go. It's all coming off right now because right now you're giving it all to Jesus. You're giving it all to Jesus right now. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see. Lord, you washed him clean. He's washed clean. This is a new day. This is the day the Lord has made. This is a new day. It's a new day for you. It's a new day. Today is the day of salvation. It's a new day. 
You're going to walk out of here healed 100%. Your back, your spine, completely healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Now, I'm going to put my hand right in this area. And the Lord, yeah, but that's okay. Because the Lord will, will touch that exact spot, that lower area. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Abba. Complete healing. All pain goes right now. Inflammation leaves right now. In the name of Jesus, every nerve ending that's traumatized leaves now, comes into alignment in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, inflammation goes right now. Every demon spirit, I want you to start bending forward. I want you to start testing it. Thank you, Lord God, for your glory. Start just bend forward. I want you to test your lower back. Thank you, Father. Keep moving it, keep moving it, keep moving it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Tell us what has changed as soon as you're, you can. It's less again, okay? Ask the Lord, what is it tied to? Because it's a little tiny bit at this point, I'm assuming, right? Okay, so what's it tied to? Ask the Lord. The little tiny bit left, what is it? We rebuke right now any spirit of unbelief. I rebuke any spirit of unbelief. I take authority. I'm going to have you open your eyes and look at me. Spirit of unbelief, I command the spirit of unbelief to go right now. And complacency to go, go now. In Jesus' name, complacency no more. Unbelief no more. Was that it? Test it. Because that was, I can, that's definitely went deep. Test your back. Move it around. You can walk. Why don't you walk? Why don't you take a couple steps and, and just test it in that way? Yeah. Hallelujah. How we doing, Frank? Is there any pain left? Ever so slightly. We're like just going, we're going down in little increments, but that's okay. Ever so slightly. I'll tell you. What we just said right there about complacency and unbelief, it's like we hit the nail on the head. I, I, I saw it go into you. What, in other words, the agreement, but I saw the demon leave. Yeah. Could you tell? Did that, did that make, bear witness? Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Fill them. Fill them with faith. Fill them. Whoa. <laughs> fill them with faith even more. Fill him with the pleasure of the Lord. The pleasure of the Lord. The pleasure of the Lord. Thank you, Abba. Glory, glory, glory. We'll test him in a moment when he gets up. Come on. Come on up here, Mama. Give me a hug. It's going to be okay. God is healing your family. He's healing your family. And you've been standing in faith for a long time and believing for a long time. But the tormentor doesn't get to torment you any longer. The tormentor doesn't get to torment. He loses now in the name of Jesus. No longer does he get to torment you. Hallelujah. How are you? How's this one? fear and shh, stuff like that, but it was, yeah, praise God. Come on up, we'll help you up. Amen. How you feeling? Whoa. <laughs> You're welcome. Lighter. You feel lighter. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You received. Receive from the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father. All right, who's, um, who still needs prayer for healing? Do you need prayer for healing? No, you're, you're, fill me up, Holy Spirit, come on up. All right, anybody else for healing? Anybody else? Oh, we got a few. Okay, come, if you need prayer for healing, just stand on the carpet. That we all know. Okay, okay, I'll have somebody stand behind you. Yes. So right now, every place of mixture, every spirit of fear, I take authority over spirits of fear. I command fear to leave you right now. I command it to go uproot and leave her now. Wherever it came in, it goes. I pull it out. I pull it out from the root. Fear no more. Say, I have faith. 
I stand in faith. I walk in faith. I walk in faith. I am a believer in the name of Jesus. Yeah, just stay there, Lola. Just, just continue to bask in his truth and his goodness. How can I pray for you? Holy say. Yes, just just pray. Yes, okay. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Fire of the Lord. Fill her up, fill her up, fill her up. Holy Ghost. Oh, we thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, we thank you. Lord, baptize us in the Holy Spirit and with fire. Baptize us in the Holy Spirit and in fire. Fire, fire. Every wicked curse that's tried to come against you, we break it right now. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. We decree right now that which would come against you. We say it goes in Jesus' name. Be healed. We are believing for a mighty miracle. Mighty miracle. Mighty miracle. In the name of Jesus. Huh? My leg went numb. Your leg went numb? I take authority over neuropathy right now and any numbness in this leg. I take authority. I command it to go right now. I thank you, Father, for feeling in her whole body, Lord God, completely, yes. If one leg is shorter or longer, because sometimes they do, you know, something, I command that leg right now to be evened out to the other, even, even as she's sitting. Lengthen, grow, be even. Lengthen, grow, become even. Are we good? Yeah, okay. Praise God. Praise God. Do you still have it a little bit? Is it still there? Okay, feeling better? Why don't you sit down? And um, Alan, can you see if his legs are the same uh, length? Just sit all the way back in good posture, completely. Yeah, there you go. Send your legs, and let's just, um, yeah, turn them so that we can tell. <laughs> Well, if, if it is, it's a tad bit shorter, tad, tad bit, not much, but that's all it takes. So I take authority over any shortness in the leg right now. I command legs to even out, even out. And as they even out, pain leaves, pinched nerve leaves. Pain goes now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We can have him. You can test him in a moment, Alan. Hallelujah. All right, so I need my... Yeah, thank you, babe. You guys have pain? Yeah, what, what's going on with you? You're not sure if it's lower back or if it's your, or your kidneys. You don't know, but it's kind of in that general area, lower back or the kidneys. Can you stand behind her, babe? Thank you, Lord. Okay, how much pain is it, like a scale of 1 to 10? I'm sorry? A 9. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. All right. How is he? Oh, hallelujah. You just keep standing in the glory. You're going to get completely healed. Amen. Father, I thank you right now. This pain in her, in her back um, kidney area, I take authority over it. Look at me. I take authority over it. I command it to go right now. You said it's a pain at the level of a nine. So it goes right now in the name of Jesus completely. Shift. Be removed off of her. I sever ungodly spirits associated and tied and connected to you, sending you pain and cursing you. I command it to stop right now in the name of Jesus. Well, hello, my beautiful. You are getting so strong. You are getting so strong. I mean, you're standing. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, what you're doing. We lift up Nancy before your throne. We thank you, Abba. Thank you, Lord God, that she will live uh, and she will decree uh, the glory of the Lord. Look at me. With long life, he will, he will literally lengthen your life. With long life, he's going to bless you, show you his salvation. I thank you, Father God. More healing over her, her brain. Brain be healed right now. Totally and completely, Lord, disease is not a part of your plan. So disease must leave right now. 
Disease must go right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Disease has to go in the name of Jesus. Okay, over here. How can I pray? Allergies, okay. Yes, yeah. No longer. Allergies no more. Father, I thank you. Healing and restoring, Lord God, in any place within her, Lord God, that, that would be open to that. We just say it goes right now in the name of Jesus. Come here, my sweet one. Are you here for healing? Oh, you are, huh? Okay, what does she need? What do you need healing for? Oh, a little bit of a cough. Okay, coughing and sneezing. Lord, I thank you for this precious little one that knows already her calling on life. Father, I thank you that she is saturating herself in your presence. Lord, I thank you that not only are you healing her body, but Lord God, that you have also marked her out. You have marked her out and she continues, Lord God, to bask in your word, in your presence. And she's continually, Lord God, growing stronger in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray this. Amen. I love that. So sweet. Coughing and sneezing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Bless you. We lift up right now. I lift the name of Jesus up, and I decree over you that you're ra God is raising you up. He's lifting you up out of the miry clay. He's lifting you up, raising you up, and he's calling you forward. Forward, mighty woman of God. Forward motion, mighty woman of God. Hallelujah. She's looking over there like, uh-oh. Yeah, what does that look for? Oh You're blessed. Yeah. You're wearing it. You're blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You know, the peace that God has given you, and now that you walk in much more, but right now, any place where there is still, there's still, there's pulls. And, and, and it, I just take authority over those pulls on your emotions that try to bring you back to that place of torment. I command it to go right now. Soul ties be broken right now. Ungodly family soul ties be broken right now. I drive them away. In the name of Jesus, I drive them away right now. If you have the mind of Christ, and you're saturating yourself in the mind of Christ, putting on the garments of praise. We put on the garments of praise. Am I praying for you? Yes. Yeah, everybody just pray in the spirit for a moment, please. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Yeah. So we just come in agreement right now. Whose report? The Bible says, whose report will you believe? We believe the report of the Lord. Thank you, Lord God. She's a woman of faith, and we believe the report of the Lord. And you will tell us that report. Hallelujah. She's like, me, me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Even as we sing, saturate me, saturate me, saturate me, overflow, overflow through and out of me, overflow, overflow, saturate, saturate. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How are you doing? Amen. Praise God. Holy Spirit's all over you, man of God. The confidence of the Lord He's going to continue to speak to you. He's going to continue to show you because you're a mighty man of God. He's going to continue to strengthen you and equip you. And you're going to hear his voice like never before. You're going to hear his voice. You're going to follow after his voice like never before. I decree that over you. Amen. Oh, let the king of glory. Amen. Good. Amen. Uh, are we good? Anybody else? Or how about you guys? You guys are just standing here. You're just, uh, What? Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Well, 
baptized here on the Holy Ghost. Power of the Almighty. Yes, God. Hallelujah. How are you doing? You're standing there. How are you doing? Praise God. You test it. Praise the Lord. It's working. Praise God. Of course. God is the healer. How, the, how about all the way in the back of the room? Pastor Kim's talking to her. You can tell that. That's okay. You receive right where you're at. It's okay. We pray for you right where you're at. Is that good? Open up the window, let the light in, open up the window, let the light in, let the light in, let the light in, open up the window, let the light in, let the light in, woo, hallelujah, open up the windows and let the light in, let the light in, let the light in, Jesus is the light of the world, hallelujah. He is the light. He's given us his light. Let the light in. How are your shoulders? Test them. Woo, hallelujah. Have, check her shoulders, will you? See how she's doing. People's praise. Let the king of glory in. Woman in the back right now, I take authority over any and all demonic assignments coming against you. I command right now every place that's keeping you in bondage to be removed from you in the name of Jesus right now. I rebuke every harassing spirit. I command every harassing spirit, go right now in Jesus' name. Be loosed off of her right now in Jesus' name. Every place, every place of condemnation, fear, guilt, and shame, off of her now. In the name of Jesus, the Lord our God, our healer, our deliverer, thank you, Abba. I apply the blood of Jesus over her right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Wow. Glory to God. You know, what's your friend's name? Amy, the Lord is ministering to you right where you are at, okay? And I have spoken to those demon spirits that are harassing you that need to go. They need to go. They don't get to stay. In the name of Jesus, with the authority that we have at Christ, they have to go. Now, you are just receiving. I know you're receiving. You're receiving this prayer. You will walk out different than you walked in, lighter, freer. God is with you, and he is healing you. It doesn't matter. There's no, there's no distance in the spirit. Just because you're back there and you're not standing up here doesn't mean God's not touching you. Even those that are online watching, God is still touching them. God is healing them because there is no distance in the spirit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's all give praise and honor to Jesus. Amen? He is the healer. He is the one that restores he is the one that has set us free. Amen. Glory. Praise you, Lord. Well, welcome to the house of glory, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's great to see each and every one of you. This is Pentecost weekend. Pentecost weekend. And we have fasted. We've been in a corporate fast for 21 days. And, um, you know, we're ending our corporate fast here on uh, tomorrow. But uh, that doesn't mean that we're actually ending. You know, we're going to keep on going. M many of you will keep on going. You'll, you'll fast as unto the Lord. And I want you to continue with that mindset of, of fasting and praying. Because let me tell you. There is such breakthrough when we when we do this. So many so many testimonies, and I have received so many testimonies of people receiving their healing, receiving okay physical healings, lots of physical healings, um, uh, hand carpal tunnel healing, back back pain healed. Uh, so many healings with that. We've also had, and we so we've had a lot of healings physical 
uh, Thursday. We just had somebody that had their eye, one of the eye, one of her eyes was um, crossed. Like she, she couldn't see straight. The eye went this way, right? Her vision just went that way with one of her eyes. Um, well, you know, God just touched her, her eyes and totally focused straight ahead, straight in center. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We had backs healed, shoulders healed, just as our midweek service. Of course, we had healings today and we'll hear more about them as we get the reports. But not only have we experienced an increase of healing during these past 21 days, physical healing, but also we have also received testimonies of children, loved ones that have been, you know, they have strayed, you know, from the Lord, literally coming back and saying, uh, forgive me, mom, dad, like, I repent. Like, that was the most beautiful, to me, that was one of the most beautiful testimonies that I got to hear. Uh, you know, a child that had went, uh, you know, rebelled, and uh, now they are walking with Jesus. They've made their decision to turn and to follow after Christ. Hallelujah. How many of you know that is just as important, just as much of a healing than physical, physical body being healed? Just as important. Thank you, Father. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So Pentecost weekend, before we get started with this word here today, I, I want you to just look, turn to somebody and say, I am so glad that you are here today. It is so awesome to see you. And we're about ready to hear the word, which is going to get better and better and better. In Jesus' name. So glad. Thank you, Lord. All right. Let's turn our Bibles to Luke 24, please. Turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke and 24. I want to read to you Luke 24, 49. Luke 24, 49. Father, as they're turning their Bibles there and as we're getting the scripture on the, on the screen, I thank you for what you've already done here this evening. We give you all the praise and all the glory. You are the healer and you are the deliverer and you are our savior. And we do not take that for granted. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Now, Father, as we move into your word, Father God, and we hear from your word, I decree every single person, they will hear the word of truth. They will receive the word of truth and they will abide by the word of truth, that this word will change you as you heed this word in the name of Jesus. We are not going to remain the same. We are continually being transformed in the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Luke 24, 49. Luke 24, verse 49. Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Until you are endued, wait, tarry. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. How many of you know the promise is the Holy Spirit? The promise is the Holy Spirit. I send you the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry. It says to tarry. To the word tarry means to be vigilant. It means to be responsible. It, it means to be vigilant in prayer. It means to be responsible in life. And it means to stay longer than intended. To stay longer than you intended to stay. Terry, somebody say, I'm tarrying in prayer. I'm going to tarry in worship. I'm going to tarry in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to stay longer than I thought I was going to stay. Because the, go the goodness of God just draws me in. We're going to tarry. Say, I'm tarrying. And so it says, behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry. Now, how many of you know this is, this is an instruction that we are being given? Amen. Tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Until you are endued. To be endued means to be clothed, right? To clothe yourself. It means to put on. It means to be smeared with. <laughs> yeah, nice, exactly. So 
with what? With the power from on high. To be smeared, to be clothed, to be, to be literally uh, put on on the power of Christ. Say, I am clothed with dunamis power. I am clothed with dunamis power, and I will not walk in any other way. I'm clothed with him. See, the Bible says we are to put on the armor of Christ, the armor of God, right? We're to put on the armor of God. We're, we're supposed to uh, put on the armor of light. Okay, this is Romans 13, 12. For those that want to take notes, these should be taking notes. You can watch the replay as well. But put on the armor of light, Romans 13, 12. Put on Christ. Tells us to put on the armor of God, but it also tells us to put on Christ. Put on Christ in Galatians 3.27. Galatians 3.27. If you're writing this down, Galatians 3.27. Put on Christ. Put on the armor of light. You are endued with God's power. So we are literally being endued. I am endued with the power of God. I am clothed with God's power. And I also put on the armor of God, which is Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10. They're on forth, right? So he told them to be prayerful. He told us to be prayerful, right? He told them to be prayerful and to wait until they have received supernatural power from on high. This is what Jesus told his disciples to do. And then, of course, he was what? Taken up to heaven. Jesus was then taken up to heaven. Uh, look at verse, still in Luke 24, but look at verse 52 and 53. Luke 24, 52 and 53. This is right as he was being carried up to heaven. It says, and they worshiped him. He's being carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Jesus was just taken up. They saw him. And they worshiped him. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple praising God and blessing God continually. Say they had to trust that the words that Jesus spoke were going to come to pass, right? They saw him being taken up, but they had to trust that the words that he spoke were literally going to come to pass. You know, we have to do the same. We get to do the same. We get to trust that the words that Jesus has spoken to us are going to come to pass. And we all have promises that God has spoken. Yes. We have promises, yeah? So Pentecost. Pentecost literally means 50 days or, or seven uh, Sundays after Easter. You all know that, right? 50 days or seven Sundays after Easter. It's when the Holy Spirit descended upon the believers in the upper room and they were all filled with power in Acts 2, which we'll get there in a moment. But it's when the Holy Spirit, he descended upon all the believers. They were filled with power power, right? So the word Pentecost comes from the Greek word, which means 50. And 50 days after the death and resurrection and ascension of Jesus is when there was a visible outpouring. It occurred. Now let's turn to Acts chapter 1. Go to Acts 1. Acts 1 and verses 3 through 5, I'm going to read it to you. It says, he also predestined, he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during the 40 days and speaking of things that pertained to the kingdom of God. Now, we just read in this scripture that 40 days, he was seen for 40 days. And then for 10 days, he was not, which marks the 50th day when the Holy Spirit was poured out. And when he was seen, for those 40 days, he was seen by many people. Many people. And you have to know that they were doing exactly what God had told them to do, verse 4, being assembled together. That, is the, that was the instruction, to be assembled together in unity. They were assembled together. Are we all reading the same scripture? Verse 4. Okay. They, being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Again, wait or tarry, right? Uh, delay your departure. Wait. Some people never experience the fullness of God's Holy Spirit because they don't engage in tarrying. They just 
you know, quickly. They, they just quickly, they, they'll may, maybe they'll come to a worship service and they'll sing a few songs, but they're not engaging. And if you're not engaging, are you tarrying? Are you allowing the Spirit of God to saturate you? So there is an art of how to worship. And we must learn the art of worship. And when we worship Jesus, which is a form of tarrying, so is praying, so is reading your word. Um, but when we worship, we literally want to... We want to exalt his name. We want to glorify Jesus. Yes, we want to tell him that we love him. We also want to receive that which he's already done for us, but we want to receive it because we remind ourselves of the goodness of God. When you do this, you are tarrying. You are allowing the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon you to fill you again and again. And we're going to get to a scripture here in a moment that tells us this is what we are to do continually. It wasn't just a one-time occurrence, but it's a continual, it should be a continual occurrence. It should be a lifestyle. So verse 4, being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. And verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Say, that was the promise. That's what they were told. That's what they were doing. So why should we celebrate Pentecost? You know, although Christ died for our sins, we know Christ died for our sins, we also need the infilling. We need the infilling of the Holy Spirit so we can do the work of discipleship that each and every one of you were called to do. You are all called to do the work of discipleship. Did you know that? Yeah. You, we are all called to go and make disciples of all nations. This is the Great Commission in Matthew 28. But you can't go and make disciples unless, not true disciples, unless you are literally filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, because it is the power of the Holy Spirit that's going to give you the wisdom of God, the power of God, to be able to speak to individuals and to be able to literally um, draw them supernaturally to, to the Lord. Because there are a lot of questions and there are a lot, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of people trying, going different directions, seeking after truth, but not finding it because they're not seeking the truth of the Word of God. But you are called to go make disciples. And you do that as you're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Are we all following? It is important we're celebrating that which Jesus said to do continually. So we need to be effective. Say, I have to be effective. I, I'm not going to just, I'm not just, I'm not going to just memorize scripture and, 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 and sit in the seat and be like, okay, well, I've done my duty. No. We need to be effective in the kingdom. And the way we're effective in the kingdom is to make sure that you literally learn how to walk with the Holy Spirit because you are filled, continually filled with his power. Say, I'm going to be an effective witness. And in order to do that, I'm going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. All the time. <laughs> Amen. Look at Acts 1.8. Acts 1.8 says, but you shall receive power. Again, that word power is dunamis. It's dunamis power, which means power to perform miracles. You shall receive power. Power to perform miracles. How many people have been healed coming to one of these services over all the years that we have had these services? I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And I'm not saying this to boast. I'm saying this to boast in the Lord. We are to be filled with the power, the dunamis power. Dunamis power means power for miracles. How else will you lay your hands upon the sick and see them recover? If it wasn't for the power of the Holy Spirit. There is no other way because there is no other lasting truth. You may say, no, I was healed in, in, in such and such way. There is no other lasting truth that's literally grounded in the word of God that will stand the test of time that is truth, obedience unto his word. Wow. We shall receive power. 
This verse is not talking about the Holy Spirit residing in us because you received that when you received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. When you receive Jesus, you receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's not talking about the power of the Holy Spirit that already resides on the inside of you. But it's talking about the power of God coming upon you. There is a power, the power of God comes upon you to fulfill that assignment. You all have assignments. And if you learn to press in, tarry, in your everyday walk, what you will find is the power of God comes upon you to fulfill the assignment that is right in front of you. He will bring people your way. He will show you where to go, what to say. But the power of God will come upon you to complete that assignment, that task. How many of you have already witnessed this? You can raise your hand and say yes. And how many of you want to witness it even more? And so it's, it's an art of literally learning how to walk with Holy Spirit and how to tarry a little longer, how to be saturated. And that's why I love when we sing and we just go into spontaneous flow. We do that a lot here. We go into a spontaneous flow when we're singing. Um, spontaneous flow is just literally letting, letting Jesus just, the Holy Spirit just sing through us. It's like hearing from heaven and then just letting that, that, that sound, those words just flow through us. It's spontaneous worship, spontaneous flow, spontaneous singing. You can call it different things, but it is aligning yourself with Holy Spirit and learning how to walk under the unction of his strength, his power. It's important that you learn to do this because you need to do that out there as well. So as you get trained, and that's what you come here, you get, you get trained. You come to church, you get, part of why you come to church is you get trained how to, how to walk, how to be effective, right? Everywhere you go in life, right? So part of why you come is to literally be equipped to get trained up so that you can be his disciples that carry power. Not a powerless Christian, of which there are many, a powerful Christian that's in sync and in tune with the Holy Spirit and knows what God is saying to do at that moment in time and will literally carry it out as ridiculous as it may seem in your mind, right? Because sometimes, if truth be told, it does. It seems ridiculous. It seems kind of crazy. But we, like some of the things that the Lord may have you say or do, right? The unction of the Holy Spirit. Let's just say, for instance, since maybe some of you need an example. I don't know. But, you know, you're praying for somebody, and all of a sudden you feel the unction of the Holy Spirit come upon you. And your voice goes up. <laughs> you know, a few decibels, maybe a lot. Your voice goes, goes up, and maybe you all of a sudden you, decide, you say, the fire of the Lord. Well, get, really? Like, how is that going to help that individual? But under the unction of the Holy Spirit, you better believe that that person is getting set free, that person is getting delivered, that person is getting healed, that person is literally being transformed because it's the power of the Spirit that he unctioned you to do and to say whatever you just got done saying, even though it seemed kind of ridiculous in your own mind. Because we don't go by our own minds. At least we shouldn't. We should go by the power of the Holy Spirit and be so used to, be so used to letting him lead us and his power that we, we don't question it. I don't question it. I don't really care if I look ridiculous and it doesn't matter to me because it's not me. If, you, if you're looking at the individual, uh, then you have your eyes on the wrong person. Your eyes should be on what Jesus is doing through that vessel, not that vessel. Right? Your eyes should be on, Jesus, what are you doing through them? And, and when your eyes are on that, then you're focused, you're aligned correctly. You too are being trained to do what God calls you to do. And you're not going to care what, it, what people think about you, what it may look like, because you realize there is power, the power of God, in trusting every move of God. Every move of God. We have to trust we get to trust, right? You can't live in under the power of the Holy Spirit without doing what I'm telling you to do. You'll miss opportunities constantly. We don't want to miss opportunities, right? So we're called to be disciples. We're called to go and make disciples. We're called to make disciples all 
all around the world. That's literally what we're called to do. So verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit, that power is doing a mispower to perform miracles. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the disciples in Jerusalem, this marked the date of the beginning of the Christian church. This marked the first century church, the beginning of the, of the Christian church. So in the Old Testament, God's people consisted of Israelis. But Pentecost heals the division, the dividing line. It literally heals that dividing line through the outpouring. He poured out on all of them. The 120 that were in the upper room upon all of them. And that was something that continued to spread over every tongue, every tribe, every nation. Are we hearing this? God reconciled us through his son. Right? God reconciled us through Jesus. Right? We know the cross. We know that the blood. We were reconciled through his son so that we have been made one body. He said to go and wait and to tarry in unison, in unity. So critical. When there is not unity, then the power of God can't move as freely. It's a hindrance. It's when there is no unity, there's a hindering spirit. And the person that gets shortchanged, really honestly, is the person carrying the hindering spirit. So that's why we don't want to carry a hindering spirit, a spirit of division or anything like that. We want to get rid of that, right? We want to repent of that and get rid of that. We want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and be filled with the power. We want to be endued with power from on high so that we can share his love to everybody. Amen. 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 Yes, endued with the power from on high. Look at verse 9, Acts 1, 9. Because when Jesus was taken up to heaven, Shekinah glory, the cloud of glory, came down. Look at verse 9. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him. A cloud received him and he went out of their sight. The Shekinah glory cloud just enveloped him as he went up. What happens in these services when we're in the thick of the glory, but the Shekinah glory cloud enters the room and people get healed just because of the glory? What is the glory but the presence of the Holy Spirit? The cloud came. They watched. The disciples watched as Jesus was just literally just enveloped in this cloud and he was taken up. But we know he's coming back down. But it's his glory that comes down all the time. It's his presence that comes down all the time. As much as you want. As much as we want. We don't want to limit. Yeah. As much as we want. As much as we make room for. So if we make room in our hearts, and if we make room in our minds to really engage and have that, that encounter with Jesus, you are literally making room for his glory to come down upon you and to literally be saturated to have that glory outpouring that we sing about. But literally, you become so engaged and one with him that you're being literally, you're getting filled up with his power. That's why the, the, in the presence of the Lord, there's the fullness of joy. Fullness of joy in his presence. He literally pours out his Shekinah glory. And, and of course, we know he, as he pours out his glory, anything that is needed in your life is actually supplied by the great supplier. Healing is supplied. Renewed vision is supplied. Focus, clarity, joy. Purpose. You know, you're getting filled. You're getting strong. Your spirit is growing. You're getting the boldness of the Lord. You've got purpose. You have, you know, your desires have changed from what used to uh, pull you to now what you literally desire, which is all of Jesus. You're becoming lovesick lovers of Jesus. Why? Why? 
because we practice the presence of God. We're, we're acknowledging, we're celebrating, we're, you know, the Pentecost weekend. But in reality, we live this way. This is not a one-time-a-year celebration for us. And it shouldn't be for any Christian, to be honest with you. It shouldn't be for any Christian. It should literally be a continual lifestyle of letting Holy Spirit pour in and letting Holy Spirit pour out. Say it's a lifestyle. Say every time we gather together, People get healed. People get set on fire like boldness. People receive confidence. Their lives are transformed. Now turn to Acts chapter 2. So I want to read to you about the birthing of the church. Acts chapter 2, verses uh, 1 through 4. Now when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And I've already touched on that, unity, right? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They were just doing what Jesus told them to do. They were being obedient. And the sound, and the rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. So there was noise, noise from heaven, a sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind, and there appeared to them, it says, divided tongues as of fire. And each one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled. Say they were all filled. We are all filled. You are all being filled yes. with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It is the Holy Spirit in you that will give you utterance to literally speak the language of heaven. I'm going to take a break right now, and we're going to all speak in our heavenly language. I want you to just take one minute and start to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. We're filled with the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. And if you have not received your spiritual language right now, is a great time to say, I haven't received it, but I would like it. And I'm going to just trust God right now. Lord, move through me. Lord, speak through me. Speak through me. Fill me, Holy Spirit. Speak through me. Yes, Lord God. The unction, the unction of God as I speak you, uh, words that you give me utterance for. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And look at verse 6. And when this sound occurred... The multitudes came together, and they were they were con and and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. So everyone's like, "What is this?" Right? They all heard them speak in their own language, even though they didn't know that language before. Right? Go go to verse uh, verse twelve, and so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, "Whatever could this mean? What is this?" They were confused. Right? Some of the people there, and verse thirteen. Others, they mocked, and they said, oh, they're, they're, they're full of wine. They're, they're, just, they're just full of wine. They're mocking. You know, people always mock what they don't understand. People will always ridicule what they can't seem to figure out, right? But we are not going to allow that to stop us from doing the will of God. I will be more undignified than this. We will be more undignified than this. Amen. Amen. Yeah, as, as long as you're doing the will of God and you know his word is his will, then we will be more indignified than this. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and he said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. He says, listen, all of you naysayers, listen, all of you mockers that seem to not understand and want to disqualify and discredit what the Holy Spirit just got done doing. Hey, we have them in our day too. We have them in our day. They, they, they don't, you know, the, the judgments that starts to fly when they hear you're a charismatic Pentecostal. Oh, you mean you're a tongue-talking Pentecostal, you know, you're flying from the chandeliers? Well, let me tell you something. Because we love Jesus, yes and yes again. Do you have a problem with that? Because if you do, you have to take it up with him. So... 
Peter says, standing with the eleven, he raised his voice and he says, men of Judea and all of you who dwell in Jerusalem, let it be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk. They're not drunk as you suppose. You think you're misjudging them. They're not drunk. It's only about the third hour. They're, it's about nine o'clock in the morning. Really? And he says, no. But instead, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Ah, hallelujah. You know, this is first spoken of in the, in the, in the book of Joel. The prophet Joel first said this. It's just restated here in Acts. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says the Lord, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Come on, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That means all of you shall prophesy because you are also sons and daughters of the Most High God. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. You're not pouring it out. I'm pouring out my spirit. And they shall prophesy. Again, he's saying they're going to prophesy. You're going to prophesy. He says, I'm going to show wonders in heaven above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass. Come on, when God says, and it shall come to pass, maybe we ought to listen and maybe we ought to believe it, right? And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In verse 39, it says, this promise is for you and for your children. You go over to verse 39, you'll see it. It, this promise is not only for you, but it's also for your loved ones. Claim it. What did he say? What did, wait, when Peter was saying this, he says, but it says, it shall come to pass. Listen, when Peter said, gave this message, this sermon, like over 3,000 people got saved. Like a lot of people, they were all, they were all like just convicted. And they said, oh, I thought they were just drunk. I thought they were just acting crazy. I didn't realize this is something called the power of the Holy Spirit that's transforming them and transforming you as well. You're being transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And again, they were in unison. They were in agreement. They were saying, Lord, give me everything you have. I want it all. You will not, or I should rephrase that, you should not limit the Holy Spirit, because he wants to pour out bigger than you have ever even, can even imagine. Yeah? Amen. So the miracle of Pentecost, it was a miracle. The miracle of Pentecost, it happened to everyone in that room. That's the desire. That's the heart of the Lord. Everyone present will be touched by the infilling power of God that comes upon you, every one of you. Miracles. And we are called to do this continually. Ephesians 5, 18. Ephesians 5, 18. We are told to continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. But that continually be filled with the Holy Spirit means to continually being steadfast, continually being focused, continually be ye being filled. Be ye being filled. So what does that mean but a consistent? A consistent filling of God, not a one-time occurrence. And I've often told you, you don't eat one time and you don't drink one time, but it's a consistency, right? Because otherwise you get weak, you get anemic, but the same is true in the spirit. You've, we have got to keep our, our wells filled up. Don't let the well run dry. Amen. The water of life, right? Jesus. So uh, do not get drunk on wine. This is, verse, this is Ephesians 5.18. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. He's telling us, don't you, don't you, can you understand here? Think about the word picture. He could have said anything. He could have equated getting filled with the Holy Spirit 
with anything. But he chose this analogy. Don't be drunk with wine. Now, you all know what a drunk person looks like, right? And, and it's, it could be very dangerous, right? They do all kinds of things. They're not themselves, right? But he uses this example to show you we are not to be drunk with wine and look like that. But we are to be filled with the Holy Spirit and let him move through you in whatever manner he chooses. And the point here is not so that you just look foolish and ridiculous. The point here is, is that you are yielded to Holy Spirit and you allow him 100% 100% permission, percent permission to move through you, whatever that looks like. See, sometimes people get the focus on the manifestation instead of the presence of God. And they just do stupid things to look like, oh, look, I'm so filled with God. No, you're actually just acting. We, we don't want any actors and actresses. That's not what he's asking from you. He wants you to be so yielded that you're open to whatever he wants to do through you. And so, therefore... He will move through you, and it may not be your norm, right? Like it may make you feel a little uncomfortable or maybe very uncomfortable, but it's okay because you know you have yielded yourself to the Holy Spirit and you trust him fully. So your focus is on Jesus and his presence and not on the external, you know, commotion or motion, right? It's not the end result. You're looking at him and whatever he chooses to do. You're good with it, right? I think that's an important, I think it's really important that we get that, especially in a church like ours where we are, we're used to like a lot of, a lot of stuff, <laughs> you know, but we just need to always make sure, Lord, I don't want any of me. You know, God knows. He knows when it's something that you're just conjuring up or whether it's, it's truly the purity of the move of God. And we want the purity of his move coming forth through us. We don't want to have to answer to anything else, Right? So it's important. So the word be filled. There are uh, two things I want to tell you about the word be filled. We just read it. Be filled, right? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. So be filled. First of all, it's a present tense verb, which means to do it regularly or do it continually. Okay? Be filled continually. But it's also an imperative word, which means it's a command and not a suggestion. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. It's, he's not saying, you know, be filled if you feel like it or sometimes be filled. But be being filled in the original text. And remember, it's a command. And don't you love the commandments of God? Because when you love the commandments of God, God, it's like they, it keeps, they keep you safe. They keep you safe. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I obey your word. Now you obey the word of God, and you know there's safety in it, right? There, there's obedience, yeah, and, and there's freedom in it. There's so much freedom in it. It's beautiful, but it's true freedom and not lawlessness. Amen. So we will continually be filled with the Holy Spirit, and we need the Holy Spirit so that we can live right, so that we can walk right, so that we can have the wisdom of God, so that we can give him honor and glory. And that is the bottom line. And I started off this message with saying, how do you worship him? Do you come to a worship service to give him all praise and glory, all honor, and exalt him? Yes, that's why we come. We love him come out of obedience, but we all ultimately, we just want to lavish our love upon him, right? And so as we do that, as we are worshiping him, we're getting filled with the Holy Spirit. We're getting continually filled with the Holy Spirit, which means we're being empowered. We're being empowered with the power of God from on high to do what he's called you to do. Amen? Yeah. Stand to your feet.
Let's give God the glory. Just honor Jesus right now. Thank you, Father. We bless you. Hallelujah. We give you the praise. We glorify your name right now. I thank you, Lord God. What a beautiful plan you have for us that we would abide with the power of the Holy Spirit, continually being filled with the power of God as we yield to you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way in us. Do unto us. Do through us. Do... Lord, whatever it is you have for us, but we say yes to you. We will not limit the Holy Spirit. We will not shortchange Holy Spirit. We will not be in our own thinking, but instead we put on the mind of Christ. We put on the garments of praise. We choose you, Jesus, for you've already chosen us. And we bless you and we thank you, Lord God, for all that you are doing in our lives. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's children said, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. There, you may be seated. You may be seated. There are envelopes in the back of the chairs. Uh, these are for tithes and offerings. Uh, go ahead and, and grab an envelope. If, if the Lord has put upon your heart here this evening to, to give unto the Lord, then you will go ahead and fill out one of those envelopes. And I want you to give as unto the Lord. I also don't want you to give under compulsion. I want you to give hilariously because Jesus has spoken to your heart. And he has told you, this is what I want you to do. And so, Lord, I thank you that they will hear the voice of their heavenly father and be obedient. And as we're obedient to the voice of the heavenly father, there is a blessing in store for us that overwhelms and overtakes us. So I thank you, Lord God, for that truth that you have spoken to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that as they give, Lord God, it has been given back unto them, Lord God, to an overflow. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.